every full-time RVer's, not worst nightmare, but kind of close, having to drop your RV off at a repair shop for a few days. So Nobody's gonna do it for you. Got to find a home. Good morning. So I spent the week, I think it's been almost a week at Lake Mead, just not wanting to deal with the RV. I called a couple of mobile RV places to see if they'd come out. The one guy busted knuckle in Las Vegas said he thinks it sounds like the transmission. So uh, he said that's not something they want to work on remotely. So bring it into the shop. He really thinks it's the transmission. He has a Ford E450 or Ford something. He said it was doing the exact same thing mine is doing. And he's pretty sure it's the transmission. So, uh, what I'm going to do, because I'm on a dry lake bed, my, um, my uh, roadside assistants would prefer to pick me up on the road. I'm, I don't know, a couple hundred yards from the road. So, I'm just going to drive it over to the road. We'll see how it does. If it drives to the road, I'm going to try to drive it back up the hill I came down. If it drives up the hill okay, then I'm going to go to the dump station, which is about five miles down the road, because it would be nice. I've been sitting out here a week. It'd be nice to dump my tanks before it sits in the um, repair shop. So, fingers crossed. You know, I mean, I've been sitting here kind of preparing myself for spending a week or two in civilization. The guy won't let me stay in my RV at his shop, so i got to get a hotel. There goes my emergency budget. It's a good thing I have one. All right, I'm gonna get this started. Let's see how it goes. Maureen Carrigan is a professor of literature at Georgetown University. She reviewed the movie. I made it all the way to Vegas. <laughs> driving thinking uh, as soon as I'm I break down I'm gonna call the tow truck I left super early thinking I was gonna wait have to wait a couple hours for a tow truck and I made it to Vegas I called the shop and they had an emergency come in yesterday it's Monday so uh, he said if I could just bring it in tomorrow um, so I'm gonna just go check into the hotel I called and uh, it's too early they don't have any rooms ready so I have to wait for check-in so I'm just gonna bop around Vegas maybe I'll go get some lunch it's not the transmission. That's the good news. It's not the transmission. If it was the transmission, it drove fine. Not, it didn't replicate the problem. It drove completely fine all the way here. An hour into Vegas, it drove completely fine. No problems whatsoever. But I'm not going to take any chances because I'm getting ready to head out for my summer travels. As long as I'm in Vegas, I might as well get it checked out. So I'm going to take, take it in the shop tomorrow. So hopefully they can figure out what it is. I'm thinking fuel filter. Uh, I know, Richard, I never did get my fuel filter changed. The last time I tried to get it changed, they told me it was up in the pump and it was too hard to change, which is stupid because I know it's not. The fuel pump was replaced three years ago, so I doubt very much it's the fuel pump. Um, it feels like something is stuck. Fuel, air, something, something. So it's not the transmission. So that's good news, but let's go hit Vegas. In a quarter mile, turn right onto East Carson Avenue. It's really hot today, so in looking for a restaurant, I look for something with outdoor seating. I didn't call ahead, but they do have an outdoor seating place, so I'll just ask when I go in. And this is gorgeous. Sadie's allowed.
I was so lucky I was able to take Sadie into the restaurant with me, but that's not always possible. For anyone who travels with their pets or lives in an RV or a van, you know sometimes you have to leave your pet behind in your vehicle. And with the hot summer months coming up, I know you're going to be more worried about that than ever. That's why I've partnered with Waggle to bring you the Waggle Pet Monitor. This will literally save your pet's life. Leaving this inside your vehicle, it'll tell you in real time what the temperature is, what the humidity is, what the heat index is. If you have your RV plugged in and you're running the air conditioner, this can even tell you if your power goes out so that you can get back to make sure your pet is safe inside your RV. And this runs on its own Verizon 4G signal, which is one of the best carriers in the country. So regardless of what you have on your cell phone, you can have peace of mind knowing that the Verizon 4G signal is going to be able to communicate to the app on your phone, alerting you of what's going on inside your RV for those times you do need to leave your fur baby behind. So check out the link in the video description below for a special offer, 40% off my my viewers only using the link in the video description below. I want one of everything. Oh my gosh, everything sounds so good. I don't know what to get. All right, I finally decided on the Bow Wow with crispy fried tofu and goju jang barbecue sauce and uh, a banh mi. I don't know why, I've been in a mood for banh mi's lately. Oh my gosh, it is so good. More french fry? No, not today. I'll have french fry. Mmm. So good. Some steam bun. Lay down. I'm teaching you to beg. We're not, we don't do begging. <laughs> Lay down. Good girl. <laughs> So in addition to needing a hotel, everything just happened this week. In addition to needing a hotel, I also need a car because uh, I got stuff to do. I don't know how much of this I said ahead of time, so because I haven't filmed it yet. So anyway, we're on to the auto repair shop this morning. Uh, oh, I don't. It's not the transmission. There's nothing wrong with the transmission. It'll be interesting to see what it is. But while I'm dropping it off in Vegas again knock on wood that this guy sounds like he knows what he's doing so uh so did the other guy but i'm gonna ask the right questions this time but it's nine o'clock monday we, uh tuesday morning going to drop my rv off enterprise rent a car is picking me up because uh we have a lot to do i'll talk more about that later So he, uh, he hooked up the diagnostic and it showed a fuel flow issue, which is what I, what I said when it happened. Um, the guy that I talked to originally thought it was the transmission, but since I was able to drive it after it sat for a week, I was able to drive it all the way to Henderson. I knew it wasn't the transmission. I had a feeling it was fuel flow. So Richard keeps telling me I should have my fuel filter replaced. Last time I tried to get it replaced, they told me it was up inside my uh, fuel pump or no, my gas tank. No, they told me I think it was in my gas tank and it was too hard to replace, which I thought was really weird because I've had it replaced before. This guy crawled underneath. He's like, no, I can see it. So you got to, you learn as you go sometimes, but I'm going to have the fuel filter replaced. I'm going to have that sensor replaced. Uh, spark plugs, he's going to pull because I think that shop a couple years ago in Vegas was supposed to do the spark plugs. I don't think he did. So he's going to pull the spark plugs. He's going to give it a basically a tune-up. Um, and he's going to go drive it around for a long time, he said, and test it. But it didn't throw any transmission codes, so I don't think it's the transmission. couple things I want to throw in here. So he said he was going to replace the fuel filter and the airflow sensor first and then take it for a long drive to make sure that solves the problem before he did any more work just in case I did need transmission work. He didn't want me spending a lot of money on things that weren't necessarily the problem. So there was that. The other thing is I wish I had asked for the codes. Uh, next time 
I go into a shop, I'm going to actually ask them when they plug in the diagnostic, let me see the codes. I want to see the codes because you can look them up, P037, P047, and you can look them up and you can t you'll can you know what that is. So this is really important that I learned in this, in this experience. Get the code, ask if you can see it on the diagnostic tool, go look it up. That's a great way for you to take responsibility and to know whether or not they're telling you the truth you know, they have to plug in the machine to your vehicle and it'll bring up a code. And so it's going to be pretty hard to lie about that. So I wish I'd gotten the codes, uh, but I got my own diagnostic tool. We'll talk about that in a minute, but now I'm just waiting for Enterprise. I finished up pretty early. So I called Enterprise and asked them if they would pick me up a half hour early instead of the time, the appointment that I had. Come to find out they didn't have the pick up on the books even though I called the day before so it's a good thing I called So I was just waiting at this guy's house, his garage is in the back, waiting for my ride. running around in a rental car is I can go anywhere I want. I don't have to look at it on the map first to see if I can get there. So this spot, Veggie Eats in Henderson, uh, I think it was Thai. And uh, coming in here, Google took me to, through a small parking lot and I'm like, I'm just glad I don't have my RV. But look at that vegan mango roll. I do miss sushi and I got a bon a bon me. I'm really hungry. I've been running around, haven't eaten all day, so I'm just gonna have some of this. Let's see how it is. It looks delicious. Shut the back door. That is so good. I don't know what's in it. Avocado. It's got mango on top. I think it's just the soy sauce and wasabi. Oh my god. Look at this. What? Mind me, it'll be dinner. How say you doing? She's doing good. She's tired. So she's got valley fever. You know that right now. Hey, it's me again. So yeah, Sadie has valley fever. When I took her to her vet, she's got a regular vet in the Pahrump, Vegas area, and I wanted her to see her regular vet since we were in town, and I wanted to get her a blood, a heartworm test, so that I could put her back on heartworm medicine for mosquito season and, and heading north, and uh, I was debating, I was debating, 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 should I get her a valley fever test? We were in Arizona this year, you know, she's always digging and always sticking her nose in holes, and I... I debated and debated and debated and finally I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And it's a good thing I did. She has valley fever and her titers, which is the measure a titer. I don't know what a titer is, but it's how they measure how much valley fever is in her system. And they were higher even than they were last time. So my vet's thinking maybe they, she never really fully got rid of it last time and she's had it ever since, or she got it again. We don't really know. Last time she had valley fever, we saw a vet in Arizona. She wasn't on meds very long. So now, though, my vet, she's on a, a uh, antifungal fluconazole, and they want her to be on it for up to six months. I think she was only on it like a month before, maybe even a couple weeks, and we tested her again, and she was fine. My vet here thinks that it just might have been dormant. So we want to go a little more aggressive on the uh, meds this time. She has to get tested again in two months. They also have to do a liver panel in two months because this stuff is hard on the liver. She's young. It should be fine for her. So I'm also getting tested because the last time she had it, I also had it. I think it's messing with her energy. So I just dropped a prescription off at Costco. 
the vet actually called around to find the cheapest prescription for me because it can be pretty expensive. She needs to be on it a while. And she told me Costco has the best price. And did you know that you don't need to be a member to use a Costco pharmacy? So I'm going to get her on the meds and get her all better. busy day so I'm gonna see if I can find a place to take Sadie to run before we go back to the hotel it's after two got my blood drawn see if I have valley fever I'm pretty sure I do been noticing my breathing is fluttering again she has it I know I have it it's not contagious um, but it caught it's caused by mold spores in the sand and so, if she has it, bringing those mold spores into the house and the bed and everything, even though I try to clean her off, and just the digging. Cool today, huh? Yesterday was terrible. But yes, today is nice and cool. You wanna go for a walk? You wanna find a place to run? Maybe even swim? Come on. You giving me kisses? <laughs> you giving me kisses? You probably have to potty huh? Did you, drink, did you get a drink your water? You got a water dish in the back. Did you get a drink? You look kind of cute. Virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. It's a nice little park. Little lake. There's trails to walk around. Sadie's doing a lot better on leash than she used to, so it's not so frustrating. She's doing good. City walk, so hard to believe. This used to be my life. Just getting in the car and finding some place somewhat peaceful to walk home. And it was when I got back from the John Muir hike that I was like, this sucks. I hate this. It's just, yeah. It's hard being back in civilization. I mean, I'm all showered and cleaned up. And got outfits on and stuff. <laughs> Civilization. They call it civilization. This is civilized, I guess. to get parts so I met up with a friend and went out and experienced some Vegas nightlife <laughs> nothing too exciting just uh, driving down the strip in my fancy red rental car and a stop for some vegan ice cream
When life serves you lemons, get ice cream. <laughs> Vegan ice cream. I got pistachio and peanut butter crunch. My friend is already outside with hers watching my dog. Because the dog's not allowed in the mall and the, the ice cream store is in the mall. So she's outside. She got a small one. I got a big one. made out of cashews if you don't know what vegan ice cream is made out of. It's very, very good. Delicious. parks. We need to get back to the forest. Soon. Come on. Want to get drink? Come on. You're being so good. in the hotel last morning so just cleaning up the hotel this morning uh, got my rig back last night and hopefully everything is good so they did the uh, let me see change the fuel filter change the spark plugs change the sensor gave me uh, oil change and what else cleaned the plugs and the wires and all that it was a lot it was two thousand dollars it was a lot <laughs> It was a lot, but my RV's running. I got it done all in one place. These guys really seem to know what they're doing, so um, you pay for convenience. You know, I don't know. I know. A lot of you are going to be like, that was expensive. A lot of you are going to be like, well, that wasn't so bad. We'll see. All right, but anyway, last morning in the hotel, I'm free.
so uh, this is day eight of Carolyn not leaving Las Vegas. I'm gonna start a new movie. I'll shoot a new not leaving Las Vegas. Oh, so I've been filming very sporadically, so I don't know how much of this I've told you already. Anyway, my RV is not fixed, and uh, the guy who did the work, I called him on Saturday. He said I'll be there tomorrow. Don't drive it because I want to see the codes. Uh, and it was a Sunday, but he said I'll be there. Complete no-show. 7 o'clock, I get a uh, text saying, uh, sorry, I was out of service all day. Complete no-show. So, dude's fired. So, you know, first of all, I spent $2,000 and the problem wasn't fixed. So, uh, I have been scrambling to find somebody to work on it. There's a severe labor, labor shortage. <laughs> and that's what I keep hearing. There's a labor shortage. I've already been in this hotel a week. I want to get out of here. A couple places I called couldn't get me in for days, weeks. So I found a mobile mechanic. So the people that I have called have been really nice. You know what? We can't help you, but try so-and-so. And I got a couple of those. I finally found a mobile mechanic yesterday was Monday who said he'd come out today, this morning. $100 just to get here, $175 an hour. This is my life right now. So we just came back from like an hour and a half test drive and it's nothing happened. Nothing happened. It's driving perfectly fine. But the whole time I drove, he had his diagnostic plugged in and he was looking at codes. The only thing that's even a little wonky is my fuel rail regulator sensor. That's throwing some wonky numbers. So he's gonna go ahead and just replace that. Everything else is looking fine. So hopefully it's just the sensor and he's gonna go get the part and do it now. So I paid him $175 an hour to drive around an hour and a half, but it was worth it, you know, for him to watch the diagnostics the whole time I drove. <sighs> hopefully this is it. Say hi to Shane. Hi. <laughs> it's been a couple hours since the mechanic left. So we replaced the fuel rail sensor. It was the only thing that was throwing a little bit of a code while we were driving around for two hours trying to recreate the stupid problem. So it was a $79 part. So went ahead and replaced that. It's not very hot today, but I figured, I'm sitting in the hotel room, I figured, you know what? Um, I should just go drive it around while it's warm because I'm going to leave tomorrow morning and hopefully make it to Pahrump. Uh, I'm hoping it's fixed, but the drive to Pahrump will be a good test because it's a big, big, big uphill. But it's a little warm now. Even the uphill tomorrow, I'm going to leave early and it's going to be cooler tomorrow. So I'm not sure if just the hill will do it, but it's so anyway, I decided to go drive it in the afternoon. Since this is the warmest I'm going to get for a while, let's hope it's fixed. Oh my God, I cannot believe this. <laughs> so I'm going to drive around town. <sighs> we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know. So I made it to my first stop, the store, and my uh, RV is running fine. Went to use the bathroom and it appears I have a leak in my bathroom. The floor, the, the floor is wet. It's gross in here. I mean, it's been sitting for a week. So over there on the side, see, my rug is soaking wet. It's like soaking wet. So I put a towel in here. Okay, hopefully somehow that just got pressed. It smells like it's fresh water. It's not sewer, at least. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. I've been holding it together by a hair this week, trying not to melt down. I, you know, you ever have that feeling? You just wanna melt down? But what good is that gonna do? Okay, it's, it's a fluke. It's a fluke. I'm gonna go shopping gonna go to Sprouts. Okay, I'm just gonna pretend this isn't happening. There's, everything's fine. Everything is peachy, right? It's peachy. Wanna see Carolyn melt down? <laughs> One other thing I forgot to mention, when he was uh, putting the new sensor back in, he noticed 
another sensor to the PCV was completely unplugged. It was just dangling down there. Who knows how long that was like that. Uh, it shouldn't have caused any of the issues I had. But this whole sensor was just unplugged. It was in the doghouse. So it's not something I could have done. I mean, I suppose the guy who worked on it at, uh, from Busted Knuckle could have done it. But so that wouldn't explain the issues I was having. Kyle, back from one of my errands, made a couple stops. It's running great. But then again, it was running great on Saturday before it wasn't. So it's, I hate the unknown. Now I just need to inspect the toilet. Make sure I don't have any leaks back there. All right. I, I looked at all the pipes and everything running out of the toilet. Nothing appears to be leaking. I, maybe something just got sloshed around in there. Sometimes if the valve doesn't close all the way in the toilet and the water pump is on, water will continue to swirl around a little bit and stuff can get caught in that valve toilet paper so it doesn't close all the way. So I bet that's what it was. I bet the valve wasn't closed. And sometimes you can't even tell the valve looks closed, but there's still water kind of coming out, trickling out. So I bet that's what it was. I bet the valve didn't close all the way. And so water was continuing to swirl around. And when I was driving, it just got sloshed out. La la la. That's what I'm going to pretend it was. I hope it was, but I'll keep an eye on it. Everything happens in threes, right? And the engine thing was the third. So we're done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay, fingers crossed that second time's a charm. <sighs> so I'm hoping to head to Pahrump today. All right, couple errands are done. I'm heading to Pahrump. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. It's a big climb into Pahrump. This will be a good test. I almost don't want to go. Can I just stay in this parking lot? No. Huh. I need to get back to life, huh? All right, let's go. Here we go. handle this much stress while I'm driving. outside and the problems I had were when it was really hot like in the 90s but I don't know I mean I'm just gonna have to keep going deal with it again when I have to if I have to maybe it's fixed maybe it was just that stupid sensor crazy we'll see well that was fun huh not so much, <laughs> uh, but I forgot to mention, it took me more than a week to get my results. I tested negative for Valley Fever. Sadie's doing okay. She's been on her meds over a month now, and uh, I have a lot more fun, adventure, real RV life coming up, so be sure to stay tuned for that, and subscribe to my channel. Even if you think you're subscribed, please do me a favor and double check because people get unsubscribed. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below, share my video. Videos. It all helps keep this channel going. So thank you so much for being here. I will see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. See you soon.